Thank you for joining us here at Heart Ministry Radio Network and the Doors to Your Heart. We're still in our series, Dance in the Desert, and we're talking about the full armor of God as it relates to those desert experiences. So today we're going to go to the breastplate of righteousness, and so join us as we go through the Word together. Thank you for joining us here at Heart Ministry Radio Network and the Doors to Your Heart. I am Brenda Divers, your host, and we are in our series, Dancing in the Desert. We are still in the series, Dancing in the Desert, and I think we're going to be here for uh, quite a few more weeks. But the, what we're doing now is a quick series on the full armor of God and how it relates to us in those desert experiences. And last week, we just did a, um, an overview again on the belt of truth because we know that everything starts with truth and the truth is the truth of God right and um, that's how we had to base our truth so I think I asked you last time to even do a word search if you're looking for scriptures that pertain to truth so you could write them down you could just um, have them posted over so when things come up you go right to the truth of God right for me that works for me three by five cards still um, help me as I go through my day to have those scriptures right there um, when I need them. So truth is what we talked about last last week. And then truth is what? The truth of God, right? So tonight we're going to talk about the breastplate of righteousness. And I believe I started to read the scripture last time, but I got a little sidetracked. What I want to do this evening is just read um, just a little bit of Ephesians chapter 6. And again, we are starting at verse 10, and just getting, a, again, a little overview. And verse 10 reads, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the full armor of God, that we may be able to stand against the evils or the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rules of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, Take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand. Therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having the breastplate of righteousness, I'll go to 15, and your feet shall prepared with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And it goes on. I just didn't want to get by this week without reading the scripture. But, um, oh, I love this, Ephesians chapter 6, because what it just reminds us of the battle that we're in. And sometimes we say um, ignorance is bliss. You've heard that statement. Sometimes if you don't know something about as a particular thing, then you're okay with it. You know, I don't need to know about all this, right? But the battle's going to come to us as believers because we're on the Lord. We're on the Lord's side, and what we do, what as believers, is to share the good news of Christ. So we know time is winding down, and certainly we have to be out there. We have to spread His word. So the enemy will come against us to stop that, right? Because we know the days are numbered. So. We're talking about, again, the full armor of God. Today we're going to talk about, briefly, the breastplate of righteousness. And I always thought that was interesting that people call it the breastplate of righteousness. Why just not the breastplate, right? But we know righteousness is of God, and righteousness is the standard by which God determines if we're in right standing with him, based on the truth of his word. So we have to be in right standing with God, right? 
So that breastplate, not just breastplate, but a righteousness that makes us in right standing. Certainly when we received Christ as Savior, there was something that happened in our spirit. We were sealed to the day of redemption. There's nothing that anybody, right? No power. If we, if we accepted Christ as Savior, then our spirit immediately was saved to the day of redemption. It was saved. Now, why do you think that, you know, people say they're saved and they're walking around mean and evil and, you know, all manner of things. You don't even know if they're saved or not based on their activities, you know. So there's a sanctification process that we must take as believers, right? Again, that soul is saved. I mean, the spirit is saved. But what the, our will, our emotions, the soul of us, you know, we need to come under subjection to the word, right? So that's, that's the battle, coming under subjection to the word of God. But he gives us protection through his word. He gives us protection. And what does the breastplate do, right? Again, with the Roman soldier, it's from about here to here. Right? It's huge. I understand it's a, the, I just heard the other day, it's the largest or the most, the heaviest piece of armor because of the amount of area that it, that it, it covers or protects. So the breastplate covers what? Our heart. It covers the vital organs. So if, no, you know, no matter how, you know, how strong we think we are or how um, learned we are, if you go out to battle without the bright protection, then you're not going to last long on the, on the battlefield. Right. So he's giving us the information that we need as believers to be successful as we walk through life. Right. We know that first we are girt about with truth. Right. We are walking in the truth of God, not in the truth of another. We know people's truths change from day to day. But we say what God is the same yesterday, today and forever. So his word does not change. His truth does not change. And the truth that we have is based on the word of God because God is truth. Right. So. That breastplate of righteousness, but the right standing with God, covers us. It covers us. So as just like the physical breastplate covered the, the, uh, the soldier, the spiritual blessed breastplate covers us as believers. Because what's behind the plate? What's behind that breastplate? We just said, what? A heart and our vital organs. And certainly the the scripture for our ministry is what? Guard your heart above all. Out of it, all life flows or flows the issues of life, depending on your translation. So if we are to protect our hearts above all, we need a breastplate. We need something that protects us because what? The life of the body, we said, the, birth, the um, word says the life of the body is in the blood, right? And what pumps the blood? The heart. So if the heart fails, then the body many times perishes. The heart is the pump. It pumps the blood, you know, through our system to all our organs. So we have to protect that, right? So what are we as believers, what are we allowing in the heart, right? Is it God's standard that we're allowed? Because what happens is either, there's no either or, it's God or the enemy, Right. So if we are not living in a way that is pleasing to God, we have opened the door for the enemy, for the enemy to get behind that breastplate and to wreak havoc in our lives. There are so many conversations about, um, you know, just the things that we face as as believers, the things that we face in life general. And there are so many opinions about it. Right. How can you be saved and live this way? How can you be saved and, and live that way? You know, there are many, many things that we're going through, in the, even in the church. But if we invite the Spirit of the Lord to rest, rule, and abide with us, many of those discussions would cease because it's the God in you that stirs up that thing that's not like Him, right? The God in us, if we allow the God in us to resonate in our hearts, in our minds, if we allow him there, then those, those conflicts that we have will just be eliminated because God can't live 
in a dirty place, right? He can't live in bad blood, right? So if we invite the spirit of the Lord, if there is a conflict that you have, a conflict about how you're living, you're a child of God and you have a question about should I be living my life this way or don't I have the, the, the freedom to live this way? You know, if you have those questions, the first thing I would invite you to do or ask you to do is invite the Spirit of the Lord into your life. So when we accepted Christ as Christ as Savior, when we accepted Christ as Savior, what? The Spirit of the Lord now lives in this temple, right? The Holy Spirit lives in our bodies, in our temple. And if we say, okay, Holy Spirit, this is what I'm going through right now. What do I do about it? He will give you the answer. And if you're, if you're serious about being in right standing with God, wearing that righteousness, right, the standard by which he judges us, you'll find that things are different. The conviction level in you will be off the, off the chain. <laughs> you know, you will walk in such a way that that, sanct that sanctification process allows you to do. You know, we debate. We debate about should we do this or should we do that. And, you know, we even come to arms over the way we want to live and call ourselves believers. Right? There's only one way that we could live, and that's pleasing to God. What has he said for your life? What is the righteousness that you're wearing? Are you just saying, okay, I accepted Christ and, you know, this, this thing in me just has to stay. I can't do anything about it. Or do you say, Holy Spirit, reside. Fill those places in me that are not like you. Help me, God. If there's a sincere conversation, then God will begin to work. Sometimes it takes years. You know, have you gone through something that took you years to get deliverance from? I have, <laughs> you know, but sometimes it's instantaneous. So it's, a, it's according to the will of God. But however he does it in the time frame that he does it, we still have to rely on the Holy Spirit within us to do, to do the work. And I'm, I, I promise you, if you are sincere about walking in a way that's pleasing the Lord, especially in those desert times, especially when the things are just falling apart around you, you'll find that God will rise up. He will rise up in you. He will make those paths straight. If we trust him with all our heart, right, and believe not our own understanding and all our ways, acknowledge him, then he will make those paths straight. He will direct our path. So there is a plate. There is a breastplate of righteousness that as believers we have to put on in order to safeguard, in order to, you know, block those arrows that, you know, because Satan is coming at you because what? There's another soul that he can't have, right? So he doesn't want you to be fruitful in the earth. He's going to bring up your past. He's going to bring up the hurts and the shame. I'm telling you, when we come from break, we're going to talk about that thing that when it goes into the heart, what it does. But Right now, we're going to talk about the breastplate of righteousness and what the breastplate does, what is guard the heart, right? Guard the heart, the physical and the spiritual heart, right? And pump the blood, pumps the blood through our bodies. And prayerfully, we want the good blood. <laughs> we don't just want to take in all this, this evil of the word. We don't want to just take it in. We have a responsibility. As believers in God, we have to guard, we talked about that last week, our eyes, our ears, you know, even the things that we are ingesting, right? We have, we have to guard those things. And the breastplate of righteousness is set up in the spirit for us to be victorious in the battle as it relates to our heart. It's a heart thing, y'all. It's a heart thing. Because what? Out of the heart, all life flows Everything that pertains to you comes from your heart. It comes from your heart. There's no if, ands, or but about it. That's why that thing is so big. It's the largest, the largest suit of armor, the, the largest piece of armor because of what it has to guard. It has to guard the heart, the heart of you that God wants to purify and remain pure so we can be in right standing with God.
right? So we're going to take a quick break and we're going to come right back. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Heart Ministry Radio Network. Again, the doors to your heart. I'm Brenda Divers, and we're in our series, Dancing in the Desert. And again, we're talking about the breastplate of righteousness this, um, this evening. And I was just reading um, in Matthew, Matthew chapter, chapter 16. And we, sometimes, again, you wonder how you, said, you can say a good thing today and a so not so good thing later on in the day, you know, what is going on in us that these two things can happen, right? So this is an account. Um, Jesus, I'm going to read it again. I put my glasses on. Um, again, Matthew chapter 14. We're going to start at, at verse 13. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, who do men say that I am? And they said, some say that you're John the Baptist, some say Elijah, and others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Then the question was asked. He said, but whom do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood have not revealed it to you but my Father, which is in heaven. So this was a spiritual connection, right? The thing that, that Peter mentioned was certainly from the Lord. And he was on, he was on a spiritual um, plane at that time, right? He had to get that from the Father. But listen to this. In the next chapter, you know, God kind of gets his, Jesus gets his disciples around, kind of, you know, tells them what's going to happen and so forth, that he has been sent to, to die. And Peter, in verse 15, in chapter 16, actually, verse 22, Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not come unto thee. Peter rebukes Jesus. <laughs> said, you know, because he was upset about this. He didn't want this to happen, right? But listen what Jesus says. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. So, two chapters ago, Peter was in the spirit. He told Jesus who he was. The next couple of chapters, he's rebuking Jesus. And Jesus has to say to him, get thee behind me, see. He's an offense to him. What happened? <laughs> what happened? You know, this is what happens in life. Sometimes you're high, sometimes you're low. Why? Why? Because we have to walk in righteousness every day, all day. Even something that you can determine to be good. He didn't, I'm sure he didn't think he was doing anything. He thought he was showing Jesus what, how much he cared, and he did not want him to, to bear what the cross was going, to, um, was going to bring for him. But Jesus knew why he came. And how we, as believers, have to be spiritually minded. We have to be, because we can do this roller coaster all day, up and down, up and down, right? These are our examples that Peter could be filled with the Spirit and say just was just the right thing. And then a couple chapters later, rebuking Jesus and Jesus having to say to him, get thee behind me, Satan, right? Because sometimes what happens is our emotions can drive us. Our emotions to us, you know, that's the thing that, that fuels us, that keeps us moving. But our emotions have to be in line with the Lord. That has to be in line with the truth regardless of what it is, regardless. We don't determine what's truth. God determines what's truth. And we have to follow in, his, in his, um, his statutes, right? So emotions, and many times, is a, is a tale that Satan can just ride on. He can, if he can keep you emotionally unstable, then he can keep you defeated. What are your emotions? What's going on in your emotions 
right? Are you being covered? Are those things being covered with the breastplate of righteousness, the righteousness of God? We have to make sure that we are in right standing with God because it can happen to us. I, it happens to me. You know, I have to always, always check myself based on the word of God. How about you? And especially in trying times, in those trying times, is when many times we get tripped up because there's just so much coming at us, right? These are the times that we have to be laser focused and looking straight at God because there's something that happens in your peripheral. When something is moving over here, you turn. If something's moving over here, you turn, right? We have to be laser focused, especially in these, in these trying times. Because we could trip up. We can make decisions that could be that could wreck us for you know several years. So carrying always having that breastplate of righteousness, protecting the spiritual heart that is pumping the blood, the good blood throughout your body. And that it's the word of God. That's that's what you're gonna get. The word of God. Put on the breastplate. Right? And there's an account also in First Kings chapter 22. And certainly, please read it when you get a chance. And I reference this many times when I'm talking about the heart. Because there was a time when, you know, there was war. The, the Syrian army was coming against Israel. And um, Ahab was the king at the time. Certainly, he asked jo Jehoshaphat if he would go with him into battle and so forth. And as they were going to battle, um, Ahab disguised himself. The king of Israel disguised himself so they would know who he was, right? So the directions that the Syrian captains got was don't follow anybody or don't pursue anyone unless it's Ahab because they really were out to get Ahab, right? So he disguised himself and went to battle. So they, as they were pursuing, they were pursuing Jehoshaphat, thinking that he was Ahab, the king, because he was dressed, right? And as he, they pursued him, he yelled out. And from that, they knew that that wasn't Ahab. So they turned from him to try to find Ahab. They turned from Jehoshaphat to try to find Ahab. And it reads, and it's so interesting how the Bible puts it. Um, some some uh, translations say an unknown uh, archer, you know, but it's like a random archer just drew his bow and shot and it hit King Ahab in the fold of his armor. So there was a place that he was not protected. Just an unknown, an unknown archer, right, caught him in a place where he wasn't protected. So he said to his, his chariot, you know, to just take me out of the battle, take me out of the battle. And they propped him up in the chariot. And by the evening, he was dead. He bled out. So he died that day. But the death came not from the, the Syrian, the captains. It came from an unknown or a random archer. For me, that does so much. A random archer just, blew his, just drew his bow and hit the king in a place where he wasn't protected. Random things can happen in our lives, right? We don't know where they're coming from or why they're coming, but they can catch us in a place where we are unprotected. That breastplate, in a chink of the breastplate that's not protected. And many times, again, that's when the enemy comes in on the coattail of it, right? And with women in particular, it's condemnation. He hits our heart with condemnation and guilt and shame. And that thing takes us way beyond God, where God wants us. It takes us in what? Guilt and shame. We think about all the things we did and, you know, and how we just turn into a dark place because we were hit in a place that we weren't covered in our hearts. There's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, right? We are the righteousness of God. So if we knew that word, then our, we're protected, right? We know that we are the righteousness of God, and he does not condemn us. 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's what the word of God says. 
So if we believe that, if we confess that thing, whatever it is, he is faithful. He's just to cleanse you from all unrighteousness, to forgive you first and then to cleanse you. So it's as you never did it, right? He says, as far as the east from the west, that's as far as he, has he hid our transgressions from us. So we have to be armed. Our shields have to be up, right? And how do we combat with the word of God, the truth of God? This is what he says about me. I am the righteousness of God, right? So we have to know, again, we said that belt of truth. That's why the truth is so important. It holds the breastplate, right? It holds it so it's not shifting. So just a random thing someone said can't get you in a place where you are unprotected, right? We have to wear that breastplate of righteousness, right? So we can, we can thwart the enemy's plans for our lives, right? We have to be singular and focused to do what God told us to do. He tells us to arm up, arm up, because you may not look for the battle, but it's coming to you because of your position, because there's nothing he can do for your spirit. It is locked with God. <laughs> there's nothing he could do with that, but he can make your life miserable if you allow it. Right? There's a sanctification process that we go through, right? And our soul is what our will and emotions is all of. Those are the things that have to be sanctified, have to be cleansed, have to be put under the blood daily. And those are the things that we have to put behind that shield so God can protect us. Right? We that's the war. We have to fight the good fight of faith. But God wants us to be armed as we go in this world. He wants us to be armed and he wants us to be dressed in his righteousness. His righteousness. And again, there's a song, what? Dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. If we are dressed in the righteousness of God, then what? We are faultless. We've confessed that sin. He has been faithful and just to forgive it and to cleanse us. Stop walking in condemnation. God has not condemned you. God has not condemned you. Right? It's the enemy that's riding on that thing, that chink that you had in the armor and he's getting in there and doing reaping havoc with your heart but as as easily as he got there the easier you could get him out you with the word of god are armed you are armed with what you need to fight you're armed you got to get into the word though if you don't know the word then you know you're, you're limited in battle but we know if there is a chink easily easily fixed by the word of you know, we don't have to walk around defeated. We don't. He says we're more than conquerors through him that loved us. And I love it that whatever a conqueror is, we're more than that. So we have to be girded up. Again, truth. Know the truth of God. And God is the originator of truth. And as we are gear, um, buckling up our belt, it's holding that breastplate of righteousness. That the standard that God says about a matter. Right? It's a big, it's a big piece of armor. But we are built to carry it. We're built to carry it, right? So we want to what? First, guard it up with the truth of the word and then secure it with the breastplate of righteousness that we be able to stand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, he says what? Stand. <laughs> having done all to stand, stand. We still have to stand. But we have, we have the armor. We are armed with what we need to be victorious in this life. And we were just talking about this, this, um, this subject this week. And what I am led to tell you tonight is that God wants a relationship with you. He wants an intimate relationship with you. The relationship that he manifests himself to you. I know there are people, there are many of you who are going through a crisis of faith right now. There are some things that you thought would be happening or should be happening now, and they're not going on. And you're like, well, how can I hold on to this? And I don't see things happening. You're walking through a crisis. But all you need to do is take the blind, put the blinders on and singular focus. Ask God, what should I be doing? Ask him to manifest himself to you. And he will. He will. 
because he's, he's a good, good father. He is. And he doesn't want his children just floundering around. He wants you to be armed and he wants you to be successful. He wants you to touch lives. People need to know that you're here. People need to be healed. They need to be touched. They need to be nurtured. They need to be set free by the hands that he's given you. So don't allow that chink in your armor and the enemy to come in and just turn your life off course. God is able. He is all powerful. He is all powerful. So gird, your, gird yourself with truth. Put on that breastplate of righteousness and you'll be able to stand in the evil day. So that's our time. I could go on with this. This is such a great topic again because it's, it's blessing me. I hope it's blessing you. You know, there's some things that happen to us when we are in desert places that just kind of wreck us. But God is able. He's able. He is able to keep you from falling, right? And then to present you faultless before this glory with exceeding joy. He's able to do that. So we want that for you. We want that for you. Again, thank you for tuning into Heart Ministry Radio Network and the doors to your heart. I'm your host, Brenda Divers, and this is our series, Dancing in the Desert. Join us as we finish. Well, it'll take a couple more sessions, but as we go through this process, because we want you to be armed when you are in these, in these trying times. We all have them, right? But we want you to come through this victoriously, and you can, and you can by trusting your Father. God bless you. We'll see you next week. Thank you.